Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Doc, and this is Doc's Weekly Watch List Week 4. Um, this is a brand new series that I've done, obviously, only for a month now, and I believe that it's been a very symbiotic relationship. Um, you guys come to me with chart requests. You bring coins to my attention um, that I'm unaware of. Crypto is a vast, vast industry um multiple tickers popping up every day multiple narratives popping up every day it's not something that one person can keep track of so i'm um, very thankful to you guys for requesting charts um, this actually helps me as well i think last week um that watch list i took i don't know how many trades i took out of the watch list but numerous winners i would say over 10 winners of the week for me came out of the watch list a lot of those that i'm going to be covering um some of them i may some of them i may not but but we're going to do a little bit of review on the week three as well. Um, before we get started, I want to give a couple shout outs to people who left comments on the week three video. Uh, Film Ninja, Phils, Vin R, Peter, and Threundo. Thank you guys for the comments. Thank you guys for the love. And uh, just to explain how these videos work, if this is your first time here, I take a little bit of context. I go over ES and DXY quickly. Then we cover the kings of the market, namely Bitcoin and Ethereum. We get into some of my favorites, some of the some of the recaps from past week, and then we go through a slew of coins that you guys have suggested. There are uh, the market's popping off right now. The market is going absolutely nuts. Things are popping off like crazy, and I got a a insane amount of requests. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is explain the format um, of how I chart and, 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 and my targets in the first few coins, and then we're going to get a little bit quicker from there. And if there's nothing really nuanced for me to say, I'm just going to go through the system real quick, give you guys some give you guys some targets, entries, what I'd be looking for, how to play in a strength, etc. And it should get quicker and quicker each coin, maybe 30 seconds to a minute max each coin, because this is a long, exhaustive list. It, it maybe end up being a long video. Um, and yes, everything is going to be timestamp. If you like, if you want to jump around coin to coin, if there's some that you're interested in, some that you're not interested in, feel free to jump around because everything is going to be timestamped below. So, okay, guys, just before we get into it, I just want to say that um, all of my all of my uh, content is completely free. I, I have no paid content. I have no paid groups, um, no paid services. Everything is 100% transparent, 100% free from YouTube to Discord to Twitter. And if you're enjoying my content and you join the weekly watch list where I cover your chart requests every week, the best way of supporting me is by signing up to Bybit and trading using my affiliate link in the description box below. This is at no cost to you. But if you didn't know, gives content creators such as myself a small kickback in the trading fees that the exchanges charge. So if you're trading an account that's not linked to an affiliate, 100% of your trading fees is going to the exchange. But if you'd like to support me opening up an exchange using the link in the description box below, a portion of the fees in your everyday trades anyways will be kicked back to the content creator of your choice. And then lastly, if you're enjoying the weekly watches and you want live updates of the setups covered here today, be sure to follow me on Twitter at DocXBT and in my public Discord. Both of those links will be in the description box below as well. All right, guys, let's get into the video. Okay, so my thoughts going into the week. Um, basically, the question on everyone's mind, is this a continuation? Are we going to get a pullback? Is this a rug pull, etc.? Are we going to get a, a nasty correction that gives everyone the opportunity to get into the market? There's a lot of people sidelined right now, don't know how to get in. Is the market going to be um, is the market going to be generous and give us a nice pullback in, in comfy entries? In my experience, the market moves against the majority. So people have to be offsides for the market to move. So right now, if a lot of people are sidelined, they may be trickling in, which adds to the buying pressure, adds to the trending pressure, right? Um, another thing I like to say is a trending market is going to continue trending. Like the trend is your friend until the trend ends. And right now, the trend is upwards. Um, it is speculative right now to say that this may be the first higher low in the ES, in the S&P index, if we can clear... Uh, this level right here, this key monthly level, right? So we're very close to that. Um, and we're heading, we're coming into a lot of resistance. So this level is a very contested level on the monthly. I've spoke about this many times. I have many, many videos covering the same level, but 4120 is a very key SR level for the ES, for, for, the, for the indexes, right? 
And, and breaking above this on a monthly is going to be a very bullish sign for continuation, but it's a very contested level. And if we go to the daily and we put on the volume profile, you guys will see how much volume and how much how many um, shares have been exchanged at this level, right? This is a high volume node. So breaking this is not going to be any easy task. We've been rejected once. We've been rejected twice. We're coming up on it a third time. My personal bias says that this time we will not be capped here. We may range here. We may find some resistance here, but my personal bias says that we're going to break above this. We're going to test 4,300 and we may even put a deviation above 4,300. That's just where my bias is right now. And then going, uh, going to the other thing that's in context in this video is DXY. Now DXY has been in, it has been slaughtered for months now, right? It's straight down, but it's coming to a very key high time frame level, right? So just how the ES is coming to that key monthly level that is a pivot point, DXY is coming to a level that is a pivot point as well. So short term, could we see maybe a little bit more downside and then a big bounce? I think so. Um, I have been, I always tell you guys when I'm, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I, I'm, I always come clean. DXY is one of the markets that I have not had a lot of success in charting, even though it went straight up and then straight down. Uh, there's been multiple times on the way down where I've been looking for more of a bounce, more of a bounce around the 106 level, around the 104 level that I didn't really seem to get. Um, this is not going to be an area that I'm going to fade DXY as well. So just something to be cautious of as DXY gets to a very significant point. ES is getting to a very significant point, And we're going to talk about right now, Bitcoin as well is getting to a very significant point on his chart as well. So this could lead to some short term, maybe indecision in markets. We've been trending very strongly for a long period of time now. We may come to a little bit of point where we distribute, where we don't know, where we range a little bit. Maybe we have some corrections. So that's something to look forward to. And, and, and I want to describe um, now, now that we're on Bitcoin, where we are in this chart. So I'm going to bring your attention to a lower time frame, the 12 hour. And we're going to talk about the merge rally, which is something that people probably completely forgot about by now. You know, things move so fast in crypto. Uh, this feels ancient. Well, along the, the merge rally, Bitcoin put in a nice market structure of higher highs and higher lows, right? Higher highs and higher lows. And then broke structure right here around 23,600 between 23,300 and 23,600 this should have been an area where bulls um bulls should have held the line right so if you're looking at this right you got higher highs and higher lows higher highs and higher lows continuation until you know, con you know a little bit of consolidation occurred and then you have a indecision point into a massive point of breakdown so this is my point of breakdown this is where selling initiated from you can see the the selling the the velocity of selling that occurred from this level right so for me, that's a very key level. Getting back above this level, finding buyers above this level is a pretty bullish sign. It's something not to be faded. And if you look at what we're doing right now, we're seemingly trading above it. We're possibly, since there's only uh, 30 minutes left in the daily, um, probably going to close up here. Now, does this mean that we're going to just rock it and continue? No, it doesn't have to mean that, but it means that, you know, we may range in this area for a little bit. And what does ranging do? That's pretty bullish for altcoins. Altcoins may go crazy if Bitcoin just simply ranges. Um, it doesn't mean that we're going to get a nasty pullback. For me, um, on Bitcoin, the minute we start closing, if we're, if we're now going to take this take this green box level, if we're going to take this level and start trading above it, the minute that we lose this level, that's going to be a red flag for me. That's how I'm going to say, okay, we're risk off, um, you know, time to lock in a lot of gains, time to look for that nasty correction. So I'm not going to be bearish on Bitcoin until we lose this level. That could be tomorrow. That could be next week. That could be next month. I don't know. I can't predict the future. That's just going to be my high time frame invalidation uh, warning signal for me in markets. Okay, moving on to Ethereum, kind of the same thing. Um, Ethereum, uh, we had a play on it that uh, maybe I'll describe in a second, but um, we talked, we've been talking about Ethereum on the watch list since way down here, since way down here. Um, this green level right here, um, go back in prior weeks if you wanna, if you wanna catch up on what I believe on Bitcoin or when I, what I, um, how I'm analyzing high time frame Ethereum, is that the thirteen fifty dollar level um, has been basically support and resistance for the last five years, going back to the last bull market, going back to um, the 2021 bull market, the 2018, uh, 2017, 2018 bull market, right? So very clearly defined level above this level, I'm bullish below this level, I'm bearish, right? Nothing, nothing else to that. Um, 
if we pull up on the daily, the 100, 200s, right, we're trading above both of them. This is the first time we've done this um, in the bear market, right? We were rejected by these bands for a very long time. The last time we did was kind of, I would say, the start of the bear market, right? The start of the bear market. This is the depths of the bear market. This was kind of the start of the bear market where a lot of things were still popping off. We're trading above both of things, both of these moving indicators right now, which is a bullish sign for me, a continuation sign for me. I would get bearish when we lose the daily 200 moving average or lose this gray box right here. This was the support, right? I discussed this in the last video. This was the support before the breakdown, before the uh, FTX breakdown. So we've reclaimed that level. We've used it as support two times. We're pushing off this level multiple times, losing this gray box, which is about 1500 to 1550 is going to be a bearish sign for me. Probably get a nastier correction all the way down to 1350 if this is to occur. Um, but Bitcoin will be your warning sign before Ethereum, right? That, that, that 13 or that 23,600 level is going to be more of a trigger zone, more of a warning sign for me because Ethereum is going to be a beta asset on Bitcoin. Okay, guys. Time to get into some of these altcoins. And and we're going to go a little bit quicker here. Uh, my system is a combination of simple SR levels and some high time frame moving indicators. Since we're in a trending environment, I'm going to lean heavily on the moving indicators. I'm going to lean heavily on the trends. And we're going to be using um, SR levels or support and resistance levels as simple um, checkpoints along the trend, right? When to risk off, when to maybe take some profits, uh, where could be potential resistance, stuff like that. So. TWT has been in the watch list the last two weeks. Um, two weeks in a row, I, I looked for the exact same trade. Um, it actually occurred this week, right? I was I was saying the same thing that um, I'm looking for 175 on TWT. It's being currently rejected by the daily 100 moving average, being rejected by the H4200 moving average, right? Two weeks of rejections in this area, you finally got a big explosion above it. You're consolidating above what could be resistance. The next target for me on TWT is going to be 220. I'm going to be looking for 220. If we can consolidate up here, these moving indicators can move upwards. We can use some of these as support. And we look for higher targets around 220. This is a long period of consolidation. This is a breakout, right? We do not fade range breakouts. You do not fade consolidative breakouts. If you want to trade this on a lower time frame, I would suggest using the H4 uh, H4 trend, right? So this is your H4 trend. Now it's moved pointing upwards. Um, any corrections into this level should be defended. You can bid into the H4 trend and look for higher targets. We're going to be using the same technique on multiple coins. It's going to be the H4 trend on lower time frames, and we're going to be using the H4 200 EMA for our high time frame bias, along with the daily 100 and the daily 200. Okay, moving on to FXS. So FXS, we've talked about multiple times. We've been covering this since it was six dollars um, in Discord. I think of it, the first time I took along on this uh, FSX was six dollars and thirty cents. Now it's around eleven. It's almost on a 2x. So on the daily, on the daily, we have a, a, a supply block here on the left, which is where FXS is finding resistance. Um, clear this, clear this supply block, clear this supply block. This now, like basically trade above this, right? Corrections into gray, corrections into 1150 should be defended. If you do that, there's nothing but air until 16. Very massive trade ahead of us on FXS if we can get it. And I believe... I believe that we can. I believe that this is not going to be one of the exhaustive markets. LDO, which is also a liquid staking derivative, derivative uh, coin, has a much more, uh, I would say, overheated chart than this one. This has been ranging for the better part of six, seven months. It has broken out. It's found buyers above here. It's consolidating above here. Um, this is kind of a period of reaccumulation. It's looking like every time it wants to sell off, it's finding buyers. Um, again, um, uh, if, if this sells off into the $8 level, $9 level, um, anything like that, I'm a buyer. I'm a buyer of this. Anything that anything that occurs on FXX that takes it all, all the way down to here, I'm going to accumulate. I'm going to be looking for 16. If not, the other way that I'm going to be getting in, you break above this, I will help defend 1150. We'll go to 16 that way. Buying in here is negative EV for me, meaning negative expected value. I don't want to be an indecision buyer. You guys make the decision for me. I'll join the winning team. Okay, that's FXS done. LDO. LDO is being rejected by this high time frame uh, supply block. Again, like I talked about on Bitcoin, it's the merge rally point of breakdown, right? Higher high, higher low structure. This is the area that was a little bit of indecision. It led to the momentum of selling. The velocity of selling occurred at that level. So 
uh, LDO has a lot to prove uh, for continuation. Otherwise, this is going to be traded on lower time frames. Uh, it's put in a big move. If you're still bullish on LDO, look for accumulations lower. The, the level to accumulate is probably going to be 9, uh, sorry, 1.9, 1.8, right? If we go into lower time frames here. This is your range, 1.75, 1.8, 1.9, something like that is probably going to be the area to accumulate. Other than that, I really don't want to play LDO much anymore other than lower time frames. This is a scalping coin for me now. It's always going to be high volume. You're going to have good liquidity. That's It's a big name in the market right now. So lower time frames, of course, you can play this. There's a lot of lower highs right here. Uh, LDO could push all the way back into that, back into this merge rally point of breakdown area, which is confluent with range highs. Um, that's kind of how it. That's kind of how I see LDO right now. As far as a swing goes for swing longs, uh, clear clear this box, clear the um, clear the daily supply point of breakdown. Maybe I'll look for longs here. Um, not a very clean, not a very clean swing long position for me right now. I would prefer to either buy it lower or look to short it in a in a in a uh, in a lower high scenario. Okay, moving on. Sushi. Sushi and Link are the same charts, so we're going to do this very quickly. Um, it's basically the same thing. Range for a long time. Um, it, this was an intermediate high after the FTX collapse, right? We had a bounce high. This is confluent with mid-range and, and supply. So clearing this green box, again, that's, that's all it is going to be for me. Clearing this, I'm going to help you defend it, and we're going to aim all the way for range high. There's nothing here. Right. This is just completely an inefficient move down, a hundred percent inefficient move down. If 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 this is going to be bullish accumulation, if bulls are buying buying this accumulation, this consolidation, then a blast up here is a continuation signal. And I'm looking to play this as well as link. Now I pull up link, it's the exact same chart. I'm sure you guys can tell. I maybe have this box in a different area. We can just, you know, we can simply move this right here. You guys can see the same thing. It's at mid range. It's at this sort of intermediate high that was set after the FTX collapse. Um, above mid range is again nothing but air. Um, if, 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 uh, I'm already long, by the way. I took this long. We discussed this last week. We discussed both of these coins last week. Go back and watch. Link and Sushi last week. They'll both be timestamped as always. But I picked up a bag on the correction because we talked about how if Link had a correction into the H4 200 EMA, right? H4 200 EMA, I would be a buyer. And that's exactly what I did. It had a big correction into the H4 200 EMA around 660. I picked up a good amount of spot bags right here. I am once again going to be a spot buyer. If we reject the 200, we come back down. I'm going to reaccumulate. I'm going to buy even more spot on this, looking for the breakout, looking for the continuation, looking for the move all the way to 960. That is going to be link for me. Okay. Moving on. Ocean. Ocean is a coin that a lot of people talked about or a lot of people requested multiple weeks in a row. It looks great on the high time frame. Um, on the high time frame, you basically have a very clean level here at 30 cents. You uh, consolidated below it. You're seemingly reclaiming that level. So anytime Ocean has a big correction back down to 30, I'm a buyer. It's sim same as FXS, the exact same scenario. Um, I've scalped this many times this week, right? taken many longs on ocean on lower time frames, but the swing long is only going to come after a correction. If this area, this supply block, this, this point of breakdown area holds as resistance, right? And you get a correction, you need to be a buyer. Sorry, excuse me. I don't need to tell you what to do. This is not financial advice. I need to be a buyer. I'm going to be a buyer at 30 cents. Um, and that's going to be, I believe, confluent with our high time frame indicators as well. Um, the, the, the 100 and 200 are extremely low. We're not going to probably get a connection, a correction into there, but you can probably bet on a correction into the H4 200 EMA at some point. Look how sharply this is moving up. If ocean gets a correction down to 30, I'm a buyer uh, of this and I'll be looking for higher targets, 43, 45, 50, etc. AI coins are in, um, trends that are in are going to continue trending, dips are for buying in my opinion. Matic, uh, Matic is something that I scalped this week as well. Simple, simple plays, simple plays. Um, Matic had resistance at this box right here. Let's move down to lower time frames. Uh, Matic had resistance right here around $1, 103, 102. Big four hour candle breaker above. This is what I look for. Anytime I say, guys, you 
break, I defend. That's my motto in, in, a, in a breakout market. You break, I defend. So if they're going to break out the market, if they're going to break, I'm not going to bid this. I'm not going to bid resistance unless I have something in my system that allows me to do that. But other than that, if I just catch this and I say, hey, wow, they broke out resistance, I'm going to buy the pullback, which is exactly what I did. This is the trade that I took. I got in at 106, I believe. Yeah, I got in at 106, somewhere around here. My invalidation was going to be closes, closes below green because what I wanted to do was accumulate more. I got one fill at six. I had a bunch of orders down here. I was like, I'll defend green and I'm gonna target range high. And that was the trade that I took, basically this right here. And I got out at 116, right? So now, once again, Maddox in that situation, you break, I defend. You put in a big candle above here, 120. I'll defend 116. Let's let's take it to the next high. We'll take it to 130. Um, I, I'm not going to bid in this. If you want to bid in this, same thing as always, H4 trend. H4 trend. The trend is your friend. So you can see a big correction to the H4 here. If you get another correction to the H4 and you really want a, a, a um, some allocation of Matic, I would bid 113. If you lose the H4, um, look out below, right? Look out. I would cut the long if you lose it, right? If you reclaim it, end up reclaiming it, you can get back in. This is how you play low time frames, especially if you're playing on leverage. You don't want to hurt yourself too badly. If you have a spot bag, um, just basically hold the spot bag, I would say, uh, until you lose high time frame trends. That's going to be the same same thing. Actually, Matic is going to be hard to use. We have to use we have to use the H4200 EMA. Okay, yeah. For Matic, since the H4200 EMA is moving upwards now, um, if you lose this, if you lose this H4200 EMA, that might be a warning signal for a deeper correction, right? You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be losing the green box after putting in so much consolidation there. You shouldn't be losing the H4200 EMA. I believe that any pullback on Matic down to this level to 105 to anything like that is a dip worth buying. I think you buy that dip. At least that's what I'll be doing. RLC, I've, d I've discussed multiple times. Um, again, this is a coin that I told you that I really liked on the weekly chart. Um, multiple months of accumulation down below if you're at $1. Breaking out. I'm going to put on log so it's easier to see. No, that didn't help because of the stupid wick. Um, I'm a buyer. I bought a bag. I bought a bag 170s. I will accumulate and I will defend all the way down to 140. We lose 140. I may need to rethink this decision, but I'm a bull at least to 250. I think RLC is another AI coin. AI coins are in. Uh, dips are for buying, and the high side target is 250. Probably take some profits there. See where we get after that. Uh, discussed RLC in more detail last week. Check out last week's video if you want more information on RLC. Uh, Metis was a coin that was requested. These are all, by the way, these are all going to be coins that are requested, guys. You guys were requested these coins. Uh, these are not these are not ideas I'm coming up with. You bring me the coins, I bring you the trade idea. That's how this thing works. Metis, again, I talked about um, Metis. It, we, it, this has been in here three weeks in a row. Uh, you can watch the entire trade develop from down here. The first time Metis was mentioned, we were at $20. We've, we've seen this entire thing. Um, I told you last week on the watch list, I was like, I'm just going to buy a position when the video ends. I'm just going to buy a position when the video ends. Video ended. I bought right here. My invalidation was losing the H4200 EMA, losing the uh, daily 100 EMA. I was going to buy into that. Losing them was going to be my invalidation. My high side target was going to be these resistance levels at $30. I got the trade. I got out. Um, again, if I want a continuation, I'm going to be looking for a pullback into this level. I'll defend 30. We'll aim for higher. We'll aim for 50. Otherwise, I'm comfortable missing the rest of this leg up. Otherwise, I'm comfortable missing the rest of this leg up because I'm not a fundamentalist. Uh, I don't know the fundamental analysis of this coin. I may be missing a rocket ship. I may be missing a big, big moon opportunity. But until I un don't understand the fundamentals, I'm not comfortable buying. Uh, I'll simply take the trade, take my money, and move on. Uh, but Metis, thank you. Uh, I believe Rohan Rohan asked about Metis a few times. Um, thank you, Rohan. Great trade for me. Uh, congratulations, buddy. Good trade for you as well. Um, Okay, RNDR. This this is not something I think this was requested, but what a rocket ship this was after clearing this range high. Again, my motto: you break, I defend. Will this give me the pullback that I want? Maybe not. Uh, maybe not. But if we get that, if we get that correction, 
and RNDR moves all the way back down to 90s, this is a spot for me to buy, and I'm going to aim for higher. Let's see if we've cleared the we've cleared both of the moving averages. We have clear skies. If this comes down to 90, I'm a buyer. I don't know if we get it, but that's how I'm going to play RNDR. Other than that, I have to play it on lower time frames. I have to play it on the, on, on the H4. Uh, I can't make swings on this. Basically, what I'll be looking for is, okay, if the H4 catches up or we drop into the H4, um, I'll have alerts there. I'll buy it. If we lose the H4 trend, I may be a little bit more concerned. I'll get out of the trade. We reclaim. I buy it again. Um, let's see the high side target. I have 188 marked here or an RNDR. Yeah, that is going to be the next swing high level, right? So we've got, we've cleared this supply block. Um, 188 is going to be the next target on RNDR. I believe that it has a narrative. That's why it's pushing so hard. It had like a 40% move yesterday or something crazy. Um, narrative coins, resistance doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. We've seen that uh, across the market in the last few weeks. Same reason support didn't matter. Support was a meme on the way down when there was so much fear in markets. Uh, resistance is also going to be a meme. Be very careful blindly shorting levels in this region regime. Um, yeah, so RNDR, like I said, come back down to 90. I'll look to bid. Otherwise, I'm going to be defending the H4. Um, everything looks great on this coin. This looks like a very nice high time frame reversal. It launched in no, oh, it launched uh, peak of the bull. So it launched peak of the bull market and it's pretty much been down only. It consolidated for six, seven months. Yeah, this is a coin you want to see. Um, if there's something actually bullish to this, it's going to put in all time highs on this rally simply because it never had a bull market. It's never had a bull market. It's never had price discovery. It had a ton of selling a big accumulation range, and now seemingly you're breaking out of the accumulation range. If you get a back test of this range high, that is a clean signal to long. You lose this, you start trading back in here, you lose the moving averages, that's your reason to cut it. This is a this is a great coin, guys. This is a great, great, great chart. Thank you for bringing it to me. Um, perp. Perp is something that we discussed on the watch list many times. We were successful in our trade. Um, we were looking at perp to defend the H4, 200 EMA, defend the 100 uh, daily moving average. Let's put this on here, right? Those are both confluent. We had an SR flip. We bid, um, the clinic bid this hard. Multiple, multiple people in the clinic got this trade. We all won heavily in this coin together. We all bid, uh, we all bid around 50 cents. I talked about this in the last watch list. I said, I bought a bag at 50 cents. We got out on this wick, right? It hit our, it hit our targets. We got out. Um, the next thing we did after we TP'd is, we rebid the H4 trend, right? So it came down here. So I'm back in perp. Uh, we were successful longing 50 to around 70. I got around, I got out around 68, 67. That's where I got out. Um, I rebought 55, 56, rebought this. As long as the H4 trend is being held, I'm going to hold my perp bags. We're going back to 73. The ultimate moon bag target is filling the prophecy. This is a prophecy wick confluent with H. Uh, confluent with a daily 200 moving average. So I think perp, this is the right market condition. It's been pretty much down only. Once again, you've broken structure. You've taken back a significant level. This was resistance for a long, long period of time. Um, I think I'm biased to see that perp may make its way to $1. We'll see what happens after that. But I really like this chart. I have no idea what it does. And once again, crypto McKenna, you are a LARP. Uh, Uniswap, something we talked about last week. This is one of the ones I missed. Um, I talked about the exact setup that I wanted. I said that if we got into, uh, what did I say? Uh, if I can think about what I would say, I think we were consolidating on the daily 200, right? This was a coin that I liked. I said, okay, we were, let me clean up some of these trends. Let me clean up some of these trends. Okay. Uh, we were right here on Uni. We were right here on Uni. And I said, look, uh, we're on the we're on the daily 200. If you lose the daily 200, get out. If you lose the daily 200, get out and rebid the daily 100. That was my plan. I said, like the the daily 200 could be held. If it's held, we go higher. We aim for 7.7. Uh, uh, I covered this very deeply. Go back and watch that video. Everything I said in that video is still relevant. Uh, since we have so many coins to cover, I'm not going to be doing too much too much analysis on Uniswap. It's the exact same thing as last week, guys, on a higher time frame. Um, but look what happened. 
we said if we lose the daily 200 we should bid down here that's exactly what happened right we lost the daily 200 i actually longed uniswap around 660 650 something like that i got out the minute that it lost that on lower time frames i lost it on lower time frames it broke structure i never bid this i bid other coins but i never bid uniswap right here and that would have been a perfect perfect entry and look where uni is at again look where uni is again it's once again trying to hold the daily 200 if successful it's going to push out of this range high it's going to test 770 and then you never know then you never know this looks like bullish accumulation to me this is the same thing that sushi is 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 forming this is the same thing that link is forming there's a lot of coins that are in this super volatile area where they found buyers two times on two nasty sell-offs so to me this looks like a little bit of bullish continue uh, accumulation and and there should probably be a push higher to 770 uh if i'm right ave is going to be right after this it's the same coin guys i talked about this again last week it's the exact same thing there's nothing else to say uniswap and Ave are basically the same market, basically the same chart. If this is bullish accumulation, you can expect a push out of here. Your invalidation is going to be a loss of the daily 200. You reclaim the daily 200, you can get back in on a high time frame basis. The dream is being able to bid 67 again. I don't know if the market's gonna be that kind to give you a 20% pullback on Ave after it did this accumulation. It did a bunch of accumulation. It's pushed out of the accumulation. This is basically the area for people to be buying pullbacks, right? You're seeing nasty, let's see, what is this? 15% drop right there. This is another 13% drop. So if they're being defended and finding buyers and pushing higher, um, don't argue with the markets. The other way you can get in, like I said always, is on the H4 trends, right? How is, uh, it's not responding to it too well. Certain markets respond to their H4 trends really well. Certain markets do not. Um, I've seen people use the H4 100. I only use the H4 200. Um, that's my actionable signal above the H4 200 on bullish. Some people use the H4 100 as well as as an actionable signal some markets respond beautifully to these so you can put these on your own own charts and look at them and try to find actionable signals in there ave actually seemingly is responding to its h uh h4 100 ema very well that could have been an actionable insight um a buy the dip moment on ave but yeah i'm just looking at this the same way i'm looking at uniswap uh, watch last week's video guys. So FET is something that I called the top on last week. I reluctantly said that FET was topped. I wasn't interested in longing FET and look at it. It's in the exact same spot. It has not done anything yet. It had a massive accumulation, massive move into supply. Um, again, you break, I defend. You break, I defend. I don't want anything to do with this other than low time frame scalps. But if I'm looking for low time frame scalps, there's better markets out there for me than FET. Um, if I'm looking at this on a swing perspective, I either want to bid, as always, the H4, uh, H4 100, right? If a correction happens into this, or maybe this just pushes all the way up. You know, maybe this pushes this, it just keeps consolidating. In that case, you can take a long up here. Your invalidation is going to be loss of the H4 200 EMA, or this breaks out without me, and then I'll defend it. Simple as that. Um, we said last week this wasn't a market that I wanted to bid in, um, and we were correct for that week. Aptos, Aptos is a is a rocket. Not much to say about this. Um, not much to say about this, to be honest. I think it was kind of was it uh, it was here last week, and I said the same thing. I said, guys, uh, if you want to buy Aptos, that's on you. I can't conscionably tell you what to do with Aptos up here. It was only at thirteen. Look, if you aped into it, you made money. Good job. Uh, again, it may leg up again. I don't know. Maybe Aptos puts in another move to twenty four. I don't know, but again, not not something I'm comfortable aping into. This is completely outside of my uh, outside of my system. We don't even have a daily 100, 200 to work with, really. Like they're all the way down here, right? So Aptos is not something that I want to trade. It's something that you guys are always interested in my opinions on. I don't have many opinions on this. Uh, if you want to trade on lower time frames, look at the H4 trend. Basically, the only short that I got. I took, an, I took a short on Aptos down here, which is really funny because look at how much I missed. Look how much upside I missed. And because I was basically saying, look, it's crowding the H4. My invalidation is going to be, um, I forgot. Watch watch last week's video if you guys are interested in how I shorted Aptos uh, for a scalp. But yeah, basically look how well it's defending the H4, uh, H4 trend, right? Um, once again, every pullback into the H4 is being defended. If you want to just trade Aptos, 
I'd say trade it on the H4. Uh, when you lose it, maybe be skeptical. Maybe look for some SR levels, right? Uh, here was a swing low, swing high. It pulled back into the exact same swing low. So you got some SR confluence. You got the daily trend confluence. You could have pushed higher. You could have bid that. Uh, similarly here, right? Uh, this wick pulled down all the way into demand, right? It held the H4. That could have been an actionable signal for you to long. Um, better markets out there. I think better risk reward markets out there than Aptos just covering it anyways because it was requested. I don't really have anything anything too, too amazing to say about that. Okay, Solana. Solana, I covered earlier today in the clinic. We're going to talk about the exact same thing. We're going to take us all the way back into the bull market, right? Big leg up, reaccumulation, big leg up, correction. Correction into the next leg of all time highs. But where was the initiation? The initiation occurred down here on lower time frames. The initiation of the move towards all time highs out of this consolidation occurred right here. So on the H12, you've got a swing low, like you've got a, a down leg, right? We've got a down leg on, on Solana, which had one, one swing high. This one swing high was resistance off the bounce and you found buyers. So basically you didn't sell off back. You didn't sell back off. Excuse me. You didn't sell off back towards the same $22 level. So all these wicks are being caught around the 20s, 19, something like that, right? This time when you put in that low, you found buyers higher up. You set a higher low. So this higher low was your demand block. And that demand block was respected all of 2022. So in 2022, when we had our sell-off, we respected that same demand block on the daily, right around 26, 27. We respected that same demand block before the FTX collapse. And now we're respecting that same demand block from the underside. If you go into the 15 minute chart, even the 15 minute candles right now at local PA are being rejected on that same level. So from a price action perspective, if you want a position in Solana, same thing as always, look at the H4 trend. If you're above it, great. If not, actually, no, that's not actionable anymore. Uh, we talked about that. We talked about the H4 last week's video, how Solana was respecting the H4 all the way down and the all the way up. Now it's consolidating. So a consolidative market is obviously you cannot use trending indicators in a consolidative market. Here you're going to use more price action based techniques. So let's talk about some of these on lower time frames. Um, you have a swing high, a swing low, a swing high, a swing low. And if this puts in a higher high, you can bid a lower, you can bid a higher low, right? That's one way to look at this. Another way to look at this. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Another way to look at this. Uh, these are your highs. Very simply, this put in a very impulsive candle above the highs. So an impulsive four hour candle should be defended. If these were your highs and these were resistance, and now we have an impulse, we have buyers willing to buy and hold price up to 26. The way you can defend this is buying dips to 25, buying dips to 25 and looking for this supply block, or sorry, this prior demand block to be broken, which is also local supply, right? And your high side target is going to be this wick right here at 3185, which I believe is confluent, if I remember correctly, with the daily 200. So if you're looking for that same play, the daily 100 to the daily 200 uh, gap fill, right? Where you bid pullbacks in the daily 100, you bid pullbacks into the H4 uh, 200 EMA, and you're looking for the high side target. The high side target is around $29.30. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That This is almost confluent with that swing high. This would be the next target. If you're looking for longs right here around the $25 level, your target should be the target should be the daily 200 moving average. All right, guys, that's been about 38 minutes of me talking without a break. Let me get a sip of coffee before we before we move on to the next coin. Whew. These videos are long. I'm trying to go as fast as possible. You guys have no idea how many coins we have to cover. Uh, a lot of these are really nice because they were in the last, they were in the previous weeks. So, you know, kind of not, not, not much new to say. It's basically the same thing. Um, so dot, dot actually gave you, um, yeah. So dot, uh, dot broke structure, right? You have a, you have a market structure break, a bunch of lower highs and lower lows, right? This is your swing high. We broke above it, clean smash above it. 
impulse above it. You break, I defend. I didn't defend this. I'm looking at other markets. I'm not looking at dot. You could have gotten in here. That's an actionable signal. Right now, what is it doing on the H4? It's probably, it's doing a pretty decent job. Not an actionable insight for longs. Um, if you're looking to accumulate some spot, I would say the place to accumulate spot is anytime it touches gray. So 570, 570, if you're really lucky, 545. If this rolls over, if this entire structure rolls over, this is the place to buy spot. This is the place to defend and look for a leg higher. Let's look at our daily 100, 200s. Right, there you go. That's confluent with that. So if we roll over, gray box, uh, 575, that's confluent with the daily 100. I'm sure it's confluent with H42. Yeah, there you go. So this is basically the same thing on all, all these coins, guys. There's really nothing much else to say. You're coming up on some local resistance right here. If DOT has a narrative, if DOT has some hype, if DOT has a catalyst, it's going to smash right through this. Otherwise, people are going to be trading coins uh, that have more hype and more fuel behind them. If there's no hype and no fuel, people will bypass you know, longing dot at resistance and they'll look for other coins to long. If you want a spot position in this, I would just say buy 550. That's pretty much confluent with some of this. What if we put on this volume profile? Okay, so yeah, so the high volume node is actually where we're trading right now. Um, so that's why you're probably finding a lot of consolidation right here. Maybe this rolls over, right? And if you're looking for a spot position in dot, maybe you get that 540, 570 test. If you break out, this is going to be the next swing high around nine, eight, nine dollars. This was marked out on my chart for multiple, multiple months now. Uh, I didn't get into this trade. Uh, I looked in other markets, but if you look at dot uh, and you want to pull back this area, this 575 area is probably the place to bid if you get it. FTM. I believe last week FTMs, I was not something I wanted to long. I was wrong. Strength stays strong. Resistance isn't resistance. Play the daily trends. Play play the trend. Play the H4 trend. Right? So, very strong, you know. Uh, we lost it once. I believe I covered this in one of the watch lists, if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe, maybe not. But, yeah, look at this. So, if you're riding the H4 trend all the way from the bottom, if you're riding it all the way from the bottom, you lose it, you can get out, you reclaim it, you can get back in. Right? So, let's say you're riding this, you lose it here at $0.32. Cents. Uh, you get out, you prevent some drawdown, you allow people, you allow someone else to break, you break, I defend, they break it back in, they close an H4 candle back above the H4, you bid this, you bid it, and you say, okay, if, if you lose it, uh, I'm out again. That's a simple, simple technique for trading a trending market. Um, yeah, it's it's holding, it's, it's, it's memeing every resistance level. Resistance is not resistance, and a little bit of alpha for you guys. I think a lot of people capitulated FTM. Um, a lot of people were bullish on this asset, and I think there were a lot. There was a lot of selling and a lot of capitulation. I think a lot of people sold their FTM bags. I don't know how many bag holders there are on FTM. If there are not a lot of bag holders because people didn't have conviction in this asset and it makes a comeback, well, you're not going to have a lot of selling pressure. And that's how I think FTM is able to clear all these resistance levels because the only people, you know, uh, the only selling pressure at these resistance levels is probably bear shorting and some people taking strate like some strategic profit taking, right? But uh, yeah, FTM looks great. Um, the pullbacks, same thing. Uh, daily one, oh, this is above both of them. Fantastic. Uh, these curl upwards. Here's your demand block around 38 cents. Something like this, right? High time frame demand block, something like that. It's confluent with prior range highs. Uh, sorry, a prior swing high. So if you get that pullback into this location, 38, 40 cents, confluent with a daily 100, daily 200, confluent with the H4 200 EMA, uh, great place to buy FTM if you want a bag. Uh, otherwise, if it drops all the way back in here, may correct very deeply back down to 31. If this is something you're bullish on, um, tra trade the H4 trend. That's my advice for for phantom okay dydx we talked about this one as well dydx looks fantastic um, we talked about this in last week's watch list i said that i didn't want to bid mid-range i didn't want to buy this i said either go higher and i'll buy it or go lower this is another one of those coins that i ended up not bidding on the pullback but look how beautiful it is this is an example this is an example of what i talk about guys when when you pull back into these daily trends you can just buy these and look at the launch it got afterwards a um, little bit of manipulation the team release some good news at a very strategic location they know what they're doing they, they knew exactly what they're doing pumping this asset but uh ftm or not ftm dydx from here 
If it happens to break out of the range, I'm going to be using the FXS playbook. Look at last week's FXX video. I cover the same thing. I cover the same train. If you break out here, I'm going to defend this. We'll push higher. That's it for DYDX. I'm not going to be trading this. Use the H4 trend, guys, if you want to trade it locally. OP. Um, oh my goodness. Look at this mass. What is going on here? This is a lot of indecision. This is a lot of indecision. A lot of people are buying and selling in here. Nothing actionable for me on OP. This actually looks looks crazy. Um, if you don't have a position in OP, maybe not the greatest place to buy. Um, is this the full OP chart? Yeah, I think this is the full OP chart. Okay, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, the picture becomes a little bit more clear when you do this. Okay, 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 okay. I'm glad I did that. Okay, so on the daily, resistance, big breakthrough. People are holding it as support. If you want to bid OP or short it, 219 is the level. 219 is the level. If you start dropping back below 219 and you close back below 219 on the daily, maybe start developing a bearish bias. I, I, I would, right? Close back below 219, 220. Close back below this. Bearish bias. You look on a low time frame for a swing high. What is that going to look like? Let's see if we can find something. Okay. This looks pretty good. This still looks like it's consolidating and may put in the higher high. Um, everything is bullish right now, right? So, yeah. The way I would look at this, this swings down, right? Maybe closes around $2.00. And then gets a push up. That's the area to short. Your invalidation is going to be if this gets reclaimed, right? If it price starts accepting back back above 220, you say, okay, that's a fake breakdown. Maybe it's just a liquidity grab. That's how you define your risk. You can probably trade this all the way back down to 170. That's how if you're bearish on OP, that is the way to look for um, look for a range breakdown on OP. Other than that, on the daily looks very unique. You know, you can see the, the closes of these candles is very, very unique. How how they it very cleanly rejected 220. You had a breaker above it. You had a, a very strong impulsive candle, not a breaker, a very strong impulsive candle above it. Buyers are coming to defend 220 right now. Very overheated, very congested, very crowded market. Not something I'm interested in trading anymore. <clears throat> okay, let's get into the new stuff. Some of the new stuff. TLM. Look at this chart. Look at this chart. Look at this chart. Fantastic chart. Fantastic chart. Any pullbacks, any pullbacks into 20 cents that I can get, I'm a buyer. I'm a spot buyer. I'm a spot buyer of TLM. I don't know what this coin does. I don't know. I don't know what it does. I don't know the fundamentals. I don't care. Um, from a price action perspective, all I care about is that this was support. This was a deviation below it. And buyers have, buyers have blown through this level. What do I keep saying? You break, I defend. They broke this level. I'll defend the level. You lose the level. I'll be out. Very simple. Nothing else to say. This is going to be one of the strongest coins, I believe. I, I believe there's going to be demand here. I, I need to buy a bag. I have no position in here, and this may run away from me. It may force me to buy the top, but I'm no stranger to do that. I've been buying the top on coins a lot. Something I say, a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of alpha. If you're not able to buy a coin that's up 30 40%, it may be up 2x, it may be up 3x. If you're not able to do that, you'll never make money in crypto. Thinking you're going to buy the absolute bottom and ride it to the absolute top is a fool's game. This was at a bottom. Why didn't you buy it? That's my question. So many things had bottomed. Why didn't you buy it? You know, you may have gotten lucky and bought a few things, but you didn't know. You were too fearful at the bottom. So the only way to buy something, let it show you strength. This is a market that's showing me strength. It's showing me strength. And I'm saying, okay, if you're showing me strength, it's like a relay race. Someone is exhausted. Some longs are exhausted. They took their profit. I'm going to come back in. I'll grab the baton. We'll take it up the next level. That's how I'm looking at TLM. Looks fantastic chart. Fantastic chart. Um, I want a piece of this uh, on a pullback. Let's pull up some of these for fun. Yeah. So let's say it rejects 29, comes back to 21 day. I'm going to defend that. End of story. That's it. That's TLM. Great, great, great chart. Great, great alt. Waves. Um, waves is cool. Uh, it's a scam. Scam coin, but it doesn't matter. There's probably zero bag holders in this. Everyone is probably just leverage trading this. Everyone, it's a trading paradise. 
Look at how we rejected the daily 100. We impulsed above it. We, we rejected this very clean SR level. We impulsed above it. You break, I defend. I'm looking for, I'm actively looking for longs on this. I've scalped this a few times. I'm going to defend green. If we get a pullback to 250, I'm going to long this. I'm going to be looking to clear out a bunch of these targets. 320, 330, 340, 370, 390, whatever it may be, um, this is a market that looks really good. Uh, I really don't care how much of a scam coin this is. It's all a trade for me. I'm not putting in spot capital into this as a futures trade. Anything like this, anything like this is really strong. Um, I've been scalping this a bunch of times. Here is a point of breakdown. You reclaim red on a lower time frame. You reclaim this level. I have an alert on here. You reclaim this, I'm going to defend it. You break, I defend that's it. That's waves. Okay. ALT. ALT is something connected to um, connected to Aptos. Aptos launch token. Very, very low cap. Very, very uh, risky market. Look at how illiquid this was, but it could be said that it was just a um, an accumulation range. We're pushing out of it right now. Aptos has a lot of hype behind it. If you're looking for a beta play on Aptos, maybe looking for a catch-up play, maybe a revenge trade. Oh, I missed Aptos. Buy this. Or, excuse me. No, not financial advice. Maybe look into this. I don't know. Do your own research. Um, this is something that I bought. I bought it at 17. Uh, I sold it up here. Luckily, not the first time, but the second time. I reaccumulated down here. Uh, I have a, I have some profits covered. I have a little bit of a profit cushion. Um, as long as green is defended, I think you see much higher high, higher prices on ALT. Uh, looks great to me. Trending things keep trending. Um, looking at a lot of support right here. I think this is an area to defend. If you get another move into here, this is a buy, losing green box, that's a sell. KNC, I don't know why I have this on here. Why did I like this chart? I think I was looking at this and I think someone requested it. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, that's why. High time frame, clean level, 68 cents. Rejection here. Reclaim, SR flip, right? Big, big support level from years past. Rejection here, clean smash above it, a little bit of consolidation. People defended here, they pushed higher. Another correction, looks fantastic. Um, yeah, looks actually looks great even on, on right now. I think this could, ooh, I think, I think by the time this video is published, I wouldn't be surprised if KNC was already trading at 95, to be honest. I think by the time this video is published, KNC could have one of those impulsive moves that actually looks very strong. I'm probably going to bid it as soon as this video is over. Actually, let's do it live. Oh, yeah, that looks great. That looks great. That looks great. That looks great. Here is how I'd be looking at this. Here's your point of breakdown. Yeah. Immediately, immediately when this is cleared, uh, I'll probably buy this. I'll probably buy this, and I'll look to trade it to 90 and higher. Uh, KNC looks great. Can see looks fantastic. High time frame looks good. Um, into the same, into the same level, into 95 level by level. This is probably all capitulation. I don't know if there's any bag holders in here. They see scams pump the hardest. I don't know if Kyber is a scam. It, it, it probably is. I mean, this price action is very scammy. Whatever this was is super scammy. I remember this happening last year. This is extremely scammy. Whatever happened in this area. So probably no bag holders. Probably just very manipulative whales and 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 hype. Um, whatever. But yeah, good coin to trade. Good coin to trade. I'll probably look look for longs in this uh, as soon as the video is over. Kyber looks pretty cool to me. Gala, another scam coin, another another <laughs> another high side target, right? So um, here we go. Cleared the daily 200. Are we on the daily? We're on the daily. Clear the daily 200. Uh, trading above it. If you get pullbacks, this is confluent with prior resistance, right? Prior local resistance. Right, we can draw that out right here. Do something uh, not quite like that. Something like this, right? So prior resistance, people are defending it as support. Uh, if you look at the dailies, right, that's also being held as support. I think Gala pushes a lot higher. I think you see 72 along this route. This actually looks fantastic because look how many people shorted in here. Everyone's probably looking at this the same way. Here's support. Here's support. Here's support. Here's resistance. Get back into it. Reject. But it actually just consolidated. So this probably. Can I go on a limb here? Can I go on a limb here? This is a hated coin. No one wants to see Gallup pump. No one wants to see Gallup pump. I wouldn't be surprised if when it got to 72, people looked to short it again and that initiated a short squeeze all the way like 120. I wouldn't be surprised. 
guys, I really, really, really wouldn't be surprised because if you look at this area right here, this is this is a capitulation low. That's a swing high. This is a bunch of consolidation in it. This was range lost. This is range reclaimed. If you're reclaiming this range, you may move your way all the way up to one dollar and twenty cents, which is a two x from no, sorry, one dollar. This twelve cents. We're at six cents. Low unit bias. It may do a two x. That's not me being crazy. This is crypto. Remember how hard things pump. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to be rational. It doesn't have to be fundamentally uh, backed. There's a hated coin. Hated coins pump really hard. 120 is in the cards. This is a time de dependent thing. Everything has to um, everything has to line up. Bitcoin has to be strong. The ES has to be strong. Uh, these kind of things. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Sometimes, sometimes these coins break against the markets. And trade against the markets but looks pretty good i think 72 might be a trap the same way that 40 was a trap people just keep shorting this i don't think there's any organic sellers anymore um i think anyone who wanted to capitulate gala capitulated it look how bad this chart is from 83 sorry 80 84 cents all the way down to one cent so it's like a 99 percent drop there's probably no bag holders in this coin everyone wants to see it go to zero go back to zero they're probably asking why it's pumping they're probably shorting every level adding fuel to the fire pretty sure mana is going to be the exact same. it's the exact same thing there's no difference here guys um there's no difference here uh everything i just said everything i just said for gala applies to mana Probably a 2x in the cards on this one as well. Probably 136, if not at least 112. Uh, I'm not going to repeat everything I just said. LRC, uh, this is a, a ZK roll-up, right? So it has some fundamental strength behind it. Let's see. Not something I think I've charted in a long time. Yeah. Very clean, very nice. Eliminating a lot of this downwards pressure. Here's your swing high. Um, yeah. Using the same techniques, guys. LRC around 27, 26 cents. If you can get a pullback, if not, ride the H4 trend. The high side target's gonna be. Oh, this looks great. Uh, this right here is just people just keep buying it. This this probably spot accumulation. Um, probably people looking for ZK. Uh, yeah, there's like a ZK trend thing going on right now, right? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Probably makes its way up to 40 cents. Not something that I'm interested in. I'm not gonna probably be buying this. Unless there's a correction, I'm happy missing this. Nothing actionable for me. I miss a lot of these guys. I, I missed, um, what did I miss? I missed FTM the same way. I, I said that I didn't want to buy the middle of this. I missed CRV the same way. I was like, I didn't want to buy the middle of this. This is going to be another one of those in the same kind of categories for me. I'll probably miss a ride up to 40. That's the current um, that's the current going to be high side target. This is a bunch of supply. Uh, might be difficult to break unless there's Ponzinomics and Pumpamentals involved. Pumpamentals will definitely get this to pump a lot higher. Okay. Well, this is manageable amount of coins. This is manageable. Okay. AVAX. Everyone's favorite. AVAX looks really strong, man. AVAX looks really strong. I feel really bad not having a position in AVAX. <sighs> Let's see. AVAX took out this swing high too? Yep. It, okay. I think on low time frames is trying to SR flip this as well. Let's take a look. Yeah, man. AVAX looks pretty dang good. If you want to say that's this is a deviation of this level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, AVAX looks good. I haven't traded this since down here. Look at the move that I missed. I <laughs> sold 13, alonged it from like 12 to 13 or something like that. Been missing all of these moves all the way up here. Basically, just look look at look at how well it moved just through an inefficient area. This is kind of the same thing I'm looking at on those sushi and link plays. If you guys fast forwarded through all that stuff, sushi and link kind of the same thing. Big inefficient void. It basically just moved all the way through it. It had it had hip checks. It had um, it had corrections, but it maintained its trend. It pumped higher. It cleared this high now. If you're if you're trying to be bearish on 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 um on avax one of the things you can look for is saying is this a deviation if it starts trading back inside here that's probably pretty bearish you don't really want to you don't really want to uh what do you call it retrace impulses so this is an impulse upwards it's probably not the greatest thing if you retrace an impulse you, you kind of want impulses to be held um, retracing an impulse is kind of an intermediate sign of weakness again losing trends uh this h4 200 dma long way to go um it's pumped a lot, man. It's pumped a lot. If there's uh, AVAX is kind of partnering with like Amazon and stuff. So yeah, that's, that's definitely, 
going to be an outperformer. Um, it looks fantastic. Not too much. Okay. All right. Let's talk about this level right here. This is kind of what I talked about on Bitcoin. Something that I spotted right now. Higher, high, higher, low structure. Higher, high, higher, low structure. A sell-off. This should have been defended. This was a point of breakdown. Initiation, uh, initiation of more selling. Market structure break. This this supply block is probably going to be mega resist. Oh, look at that. Look how these things work out. Look how these things work out. So AVAX in this location, if you're a trader, if you're a trader and you're looking to trade upside momentum, what I would do, again, you break, I defend. I would allow it. This sounds ridiculous, right? Because a move from 21 to 25, you're missing such a big move. But I think, you know, this is not a market that I've been trading. I haven't been trading AVAX and I probably will continue to not trade AVAX. But if you have a spot position in AVAX, probably a good place to be looking to secure some gains, um, to realize some some gains. You know, you probably had a really good run from $10 to $20, doubled your bag, you know, something like that. Um, maybe a good place to lock in some profits, right? Um, yeah, this, this, this point of breakdown, I expect to not be broken very easily. And if it is, it's probably broken off the base of another news catalyst, another news pump, another something like that, or maybe Bitcoin legs up, you know, it's going to need something. I think this is going to be a difficult area for AVAX to just completely push through. Me personally, my system, my risk tolerance, not something that I'm going to be looking to long uh, at this moment in time on AVAX around $21. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, if nothing else happened, if, if AVAX just did something like this, if it did something kind of distributed, if it started ranging, if it pulled back, you know, I don't think there's swing longs to be opened up here is what I'm trying to say. To summarize, I don't think there's swing long positions to be opened up here on AVAX. I think it's more of a exhaustive market that may distribute now. Um, it would take a Herculean effort um, for me to see AVAX reclaim this point of breakdown. We'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens, though. We'll keep an eye on it. Maybe the sympathy plays, right? The eco plays. Joe is an eco play on AVAX. Maybe these are the plays that start running. Maybe look for AVAX eco plays. If you're bullish on AVAX and you you know have some profits on there, maybe maybe rotating to AVAX eco plays is the play. And now I don't know if Joe is the fundamentally strongest coin on AVAX. I know it's a, a marketplace, right? Um, uh, liquidity providing market, but I don't do a lot of stuff on chain. I don't really know even the, 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 the terminology for it. Um, yeah, this, uh, this doesn't look like the best chart. Actually, yeah, this is this is how you would chart this, right? There's your swing high, there's your swing low. Uh, you lost the swing low on the FTX collapse. You tested it as resistance. We've tested it as resistance, now supports. Um, push higher. Here's another resistance level. If you want a bag of Joe, um, accumulate this area. Accumulate this area. Maybe close if you drop below range lows. That's the range bound system that that I use. Basically, that's the level. A drop below 18, it should not occur. It should not drop below 18 if this is a strong market and you're looking to accumulate some Joe and you're bullish on this and you think you can go to 56. Again, if we're in a nutty market and things just continue to be nutty, I'm sure Joe moves to 56. I have no doubt that it probably does and gives you a 2x. Probably some people that rotate AVAX, maybe Joe does some pumpamentals. Teams are known to put out news to pump their coins in times when people are very excited about crypto. So if people are getting back into markets and they're very excited, I'm sure the team could put out some pumpamentals and get this thing back up to 55 or something like that. But yeah, um, buying Joe down here on a high time frame, not a horrible idea. Not not the worst idea of buying between 19, 20, something like that. If you can get get it, use the same MAs that I always use that I've been talking about this entire video. Uh, if you're just skipping to this part, jump back to a previous coin and see how I charted that and see the moving indicators that I use. Okay. Uh, Z, what is this? X2, Y2. X2, Y2. I believe this is, oh my God, look at this chart. Oh my God, look at this chart. So it released around $2. It collapsed to one cent. 
Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, I'm taking <laughs> This is insane. Like, no matter how long you're in crypto, you're still shocked when you see things like this. All your money is el eliminated. It doesn't matter where you bought this. You could have bought this down 99%. It did another 99%. You could have bought this at six cents. It did another 99%. You know what I mean? It's just, you just lose your money. It just it basically went to zero. It basically went to zero and it's coming back. I mean, what, what TA, what, what charting do you want me to do on this? Um, I don't know what to say about this. If this is distribution, right? If this is where the team sold everything and the team is literally just selling all their bags and insiders are selling all their bags and VCs are selling all their bags and everything is sold and everything is sold and now you're just starting a new bull market. Well, yeah, then none of this matters, right? None of this matters. This is a fresh chart and it may just keep t chatting upwards. But I don't have much to say about this. And honestly, I don't, looking at this, I don't want to comment on, on this coin, to be honest. If you have a fundamental reason to be fundamentally bullish and, and there's good tokenomics and it pays you to be a holder, more power to you. There's nothing that I can give you from a price action perspective, nor do I want to give you anything from this coin. This is not, dude, this is like, I mean, come on. You see what I mean, right? Don't be upset that I'm not charting this. You understand what I mean, right? Okay, moving on. Unfi, I don't know what this coin is. UNFI, I've apparently I've charted this before. Apparently, I don't know why I have lines here. Um, yeah, uh, pushing into a level of resistance. If there's a cat, I don't think there's a catalyst. Uh, I usually ask people to tell me if there's a catalyst for their coins. Yeah, good, good move upwards. Very actually clean move, right? So multiple days. You're not really getting one like Chad candle that just gets up there. This looks like a lot of demand. A lot of people are buying this the entire way up, which is actually a good sign. This is, you know, upwards accumulation, a pretty, pretty good sign. I'll give you an example on Adam where that was really, really bullish right here. Um, this is, look, look at this upwards accumulation, right? Every, you know, daily candle just moving upwards until you get impulsive moves and then you start getting impulsive moves. So is, is it X2, Y2, something like that? No, sorry, that's not what we're on. That was that shit coin. Unfi, Unfi, Unfi. Yeah, Unfi, uh, pretty strong. I mean, that's this is pretty strong accumulation. Um, if it gets Chad candles, a lot of interest will come in from traders. Again, not something I can tell you what's going on unless I understand the narrative, the catalyst, the momentum, if this fits into the AI narrative, if this fits into the ZK roll-up narrative. Leave a comment below if you guys suggested this coin. Um, I'll go over it again. I'll go over it again in, in, in the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, come into the Discord and, and, and ask me about this coin. I'll do a separate video on it. Um, but yeah, resistance levels coming up at, at 7.3. Um, yeah, this is the point of breakdown on the merge, right? So that's also a resistance level. That's why you're finding a lot of congestion right here. Pull up some MAs. Yeah, bid, bid pullbacks. Pretty strong chart, pretty clean. Lines up really well with these highs, right? So you defend these highs, confluent with some MAs. Um, any pullbacks down to $5, $4, something like this is a good entry point into Unfi, Unfi, if you like it, if it, if you believe that it has uh, the capacity to outperform a lot of other coins, if there's something to bull be bullish on on this coin, um, that would be the place to accumulate. Otherwise, like I say in every other coin, ride the H4 trend. Go back and watch other coins to know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I mean on H4 trend, I keep talking about it. Um, okay. Kava, Kava. Is this a, this is an AVAX eco coin, I believe. Okay. Look at the respect it's putting in for the daily 100. Um, this is, this is something you could just bid right here. Um, this is something you could just bid right here, right? Just like I talked about on uni, look at the uni swap timestamp, right? Same thing. If, if this is lost, you can get out and you can bid the H4200 EMA. If that if this level is lost, that's right here, this SR level, this level is lost around 103, 102, 99, $1. If it's lost, you can get out and you can bid 90 cents. You can save yourself a 10% drop, bid, bid this area. Otherwise, this is one of the coins, yeah, you could just buy the top on this and you can look for a daily 100, daily 200. Actually, I'm gonna mark this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark this. We're gonna put this as gold. This actually, I like this chart. I'm going to mark this one. This is probably a trade that I may take. 
yeah um, you're finding a lot of indecision right at this swing high right so we can put that there okay that looks really clean so you're finding indecision at that swing high uh, you're consolidating underneath it um, if you break above it kind of like gala kind of like other coins right if you break above it uh, if you're doing this on a PA on a PA perspective you break above it you can hold that level you can hold that level and you can continue continue upwards into these 140 region other than that, the other way to bid it on high time frame on the daily, if you don't want to look at low time frames, comfy buying a dollar, right? People are defending it. Every wick up to 115, these are 15% drops, right? Every wick up to 115 is being defended at $1, um, confluent with these, uh, this prior swing high. Uh, like I said, yeah, just to repeat myself again, I would... I you know what? I might buy. I might buy a little bit at one dollar. Kava looks pretty good. The daily one hundred, daily two hundred, moving average gap fill play is a play that I'm a big fan of, especially when it coincides with this big inefficiency. So a big inefficiency in price action, a big big gap to fill here. I like this coin. I'm going to probably buy Kava. Hook hook looks phenomenal. Hooks in price discovery. Hook reminds me of early Aptos. Let's look at early Aptos for a guide right similar similar chart um, you have a high a low accumulation resistance was found along this pre previous trading high and then a bull market ensued right there's no there's no sellers other than people that you know are taking profits there's no bag holders uh, it's just open air PVP market I already had this marked I had this marked out for a friend who I convinced to buy the long uh, buy the top I convinced him to buy the top and I said look it's probably just going to consolidate and keep booming um, that's kind of what it's doing it boomed it consolidated it's probably going to keep doing that um, look at this on the trends let's see is it holding the H4 trend still yeah look at that still holding the H4 trend I'll move this Still on the H4 trend. You can bid this exactly where it is: two dollars twenty cents, two dollars thirty cents, something like this. Get out if it loses the H4 trend. Actually, wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're getting confluence of two things. You've got a prior high right here. Let's put this in a different color. Green. Boom. Prior highs, resistance, flip to support, SR flip, impulse above that H4 trend. I I wouldn't be surprised if this is the low of the week. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the low of the week, if the lows of the week are in on hook. Since this is a low market cap shit coin in price discovery, it may not even care about Bitcoin. It may not even care about S&P. People may just trade this as is. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Hook looks good. Hook looks good. Uh, lose green, get out. Simple as that. Lose green, get out. Lose green, get out. Why? Because then it becomes a deviation of this level. These are resistance. These are resistance points. This is a breakthrough. You shouldn't lose this level. You shouldn't lose this level. Buying as close, buying as close to here as possible, um, is the is is the strat. And whoever got in on this wick at three twenty um, this morning, excellent entry. Excellent entry because you're so close to your invalidation. Hook looks good. Hook looks good. I think it uh, as long as the market behaves. Maybe maybe market doesn't even need to behave. Maybe where that's the paradigm we're in, but hook looks good. Yeah, uh, that's your invalidation. BNB, not a coin I like to trade, not a coin I like to talk about. This is a CZ coin. It's got its own thing. Um, you know why I don't like to talk about BNB? is because of this. Um, it's basically been up only on Bitcoin since its inception, right? So... Now that it's kind of, I, I called top on this in real time, just patting myself on the back real quick <laughs> on Twitter. I have a tweet that says BNB, BTC is topped and I probably won't be looking to buy BT, uh, BNB. So uh, until BNB comes all the way down to here um, in the Bitcoin pair, there's probably nothing, nothing much to talk about. If you're so bullish on this, I mean, you could look at it like that and you could say, look, these are prior resistance levels. We're coming back. We, we blast it off. We may just find demand right here and, and put in, you know, continue our continue our bull trend. But I hate this coin. I really hate BNB. <laughs> I know I shouldn't say that because it's crypto, but I hate BNB. It does not trade the way that it should trade. It didn't it didn't do anything in the bear market. It has this massive, massive gap up and it's just consolidated above that level. It's super scammy. But yeah, don't we don't use our brains in crypto. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, if you're bullish on this, if you're bullish on BNB, uh, if you're bullish on BNB, uh, 
yeah, um, 338 is, is the range high level. 338 is the range high level. Um, acceptance above 338 brings this prophecy wick at 400, confluent with this supply. Uh, breaking 337, 340 gets you 400. Uh, that's the continuation on BNB. The pullback, obviously, this, this box is already marked out. Um, what? Why was this box marked out? This is the point of breakdown. I was mentally prepared. I was saying, okay, it, this, this broke down. When we trade back into this level, when we trade back in this level, I'll look for shorts. My invalidation is going to be if we close above it. Look at what we did. We wicked into it one time, and then immediately the next, the next two days started pushing back into that level. That was not a short that I was interested in, but just a little tidbit thrown in for uh, how I was using this level, and look how it flipped to support. Right, so that's your support level on BNB. Use the H4 trend if you don't know what I'm talking about. Go back to a previous coin. API three, API three, I three, API three, I three. Whatever. I'm losing my mind. We've been talking so long, guys. If you're still with me here, an hour and fifteen in, looking at altcoins, you guys are legends. You guys are absolute legends. This is insane. This is a massive accumulation. This entered in a bull market. No, it didn't. It, it entered in 2000. Well, yeah, yeah. We had we had a we had a run. We had a run in March. It hasn't had a true bull market. It hasn't had a true bull market. Yeah. There's a lot of accumulation. This looks good. This is an accumulated coin. This you you may be able to get into this before impulses occur. Okay. There's another one that I'm gonna keep on the watch list now, or I'll keep on my own personal watch list. Okay. Yeah. Here's your swing high. There's your swing low. Here's your accumulation. Um, Let's look at load time for a lower time or let's zoom in here. Okay. Uh, here's your swing high. We'll mark this out right around here. We're accumulating in there. How's the daily 100? Okay. Seemingly no man's land. It already did the daily 100, 200 clean, right? So we, we, we were holding the daily 100 as resistance. We, we broke above it. We smacked right into the daily 200 in one day, one candle consolidating in this level, um, nothing but inefficiency here to the left. Um, could be a situation, could be a decent situation where this isn't a worse spot market. Um, if this is an AI coin and it's under the radar, maybe one to look at, maybe one to look at because people will rotate profits into other AI coins, right? Like you rotate Bitcoin into shit coins, you may rotate your blue chip AI coins into your uh, shit coin AI coins, if this is an AI coin. Um, the dream scenario, like I've laid out, daily 100, H4 200 EMA. Otherwise, buying, buying this consolidation isn't the worst idea on this coin, simply because it's still in the accumulation area, right? So you're still in this accumulation range and as far as as far as the accumulation range goes, you're still in like the lower half of the accumulation range. So if you put on a midpoint, you're still well below mid range on your accumulation range. So not the worst part, not the worst area to pick up some spot. If you're if you're bullish on this coin, um, you can buy spot 160 all the way down to 140. You start losing 140, you may lose confidence. You, you can probably cut your bag and say, okay, I'll buy it back in a position of strength if you really like to micromanage. But if not, and you're bullish on this coin and, and you think we're gonna put in higher highs and stuff like that, uh, wow, look at all these wicks. Wick rejected by the daily 200, wick rejected by the daily 200, wick rejected by the daily 200. We're pushing back into it. So just like I talked about on BNB, guys, when you wick into a level and you find buyers again pushing back into that level, pretty bullish sign. So we're finding buyers pushing back into that level. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a continuation right here. Yeah, not a bad place to not a bad place to look at some spot. Let me uh, let me cover let me highlight this one and I'll come back to it after this video is over. I'll do some fundamental analysis on API three. Uh, yeah, pretty good coin. I like this one. CRV, CRV's cleared all its moving averages that have been resistance for the entire bear market. Um, curve wars back maybe. <laughs> curve wars are back. Yeah, uh, vertical accumulation or or it could collapse. <laughs> you know, not not too much. See, like a coin like this is similar to AVAX for me, where it's already pumped a lot and I'm not really interested in it. Right. So it doesn't give me too much motivation to look for entries on this. But but let's do it anyways. Let's figure out what is going on with CRV. All right. Here's a swing high. 
swing high CRV, getting closer to that around 124. We're at 108 right now. Um, a pullback from 108 to 98 could be defended, right? Because you're you're defending your um, your daily 200, right? You've already had one. You've had, had multiple rejections underneath it, an impulse candle above it. You've held it as support and you're pushing higher. So as long, as long as you're holding the daily 200, that could be a position of strength. You could be looking for higher side targets, 124. Then eventually this consolidated block right here, 140. There's probably better swing longs in the market uh, at this point. But if you're looking for spot accumulation, it's still in its macro accumulation range, right? You're, you're, you're pretty high off the floor. Uh, your your lows were around 40, 50 cents. So you've done a 2X off that level. You can't expect to buy the perfect Pico bottom with your entire bag and full allocation. Uh, moves back down, uh, accumulate some spot. That might be a good place to accumulate spot. Um, yeah, this, this looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. It, it's closer to the top than the bottom. I'd say it's closer to a, a, a uh, intermediate or local top than it is to a bottom. If you're looking to buy some spot here, I think buy, you know, maybe buy a little bit, maybe a lot, buy a little bit and then just be patient because there's a lot of supply in this region. There's a lot of supply in this region. Um, Clearing this might be pretty difficult. Not one of the best coins, I think, from a spot long or from a swing long perspective. Oh boy, did someone request Luna? All right, Luna, we're doing Luna. We're doing Luna. Luna's consolidating on the H4 200 EMA underneath the daily 100 EMA. Actually, this chart looks pretty good. I hate to say it, but this, I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but this chart looks pretty good. Damn it. Damn it. Why does Luna have to be the coin that looks good? This card looks pretty good, man. Um, as long as you defend the H4 200 EMA and you really want to buy some Luna Classic, you really want to buy some Luna Classic, go ahead and buy some Luna Classic. <laughs> go ahead and buy some Luna Classic. Um, at, the very at the very least, what you can get, at the very least, what you can get is a move from here to here, which is a, uh, what is this? Uh, that's a 13% move. 13% move, that's nothing to write home about. Um, you're probably looking for something much bigger than that. If you're looking for something much bigger than that, I would say wait for the daily 100 to get cleared. No point in, in, in right now so early into like a bullish phase, if this is gonna be a continued bullish phase and we get a lot of momentum, we get a lot of stuff going on, Allow set alerts, allow Luna Classic to do this, and then defend price, and then look for this, right? This this move is a lot stronger, right? Uh, what is this? This is this is a thirty percent move, and this thirty percent move will be on the back of people already being like, "Wow, uh, Luna Classics moving, Luna Classics moving." It, it draws a lot of attention. If you really, really, really want to be early and you want to buy some spot, I mean, go ahead, go ahead. It, 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 it withstood the FUD. It withstood FTX. It put in the FTX bottom. It had its own. It had its own bottoms. <laughs> but if you really want to buy Luna Classic, yeah, uh, you could you could defend the H4 200 EMA. But if you want to trade Luna Classic, I would say wait for the daily 100 to be broken. Defend the daily 100, and then you get this nice inefficiency fill gap fill move to 125. ZRX. ZRX, ZRX, ZRX. Um, looks good. Looks good. It already wicked. It already wicked into the daily 200. Really, nothing much to say about this coin. The the trade that you really want, obviously, is the daily 100 to the daily 200. You're in no man's land. No, no place for me to be looking at this one too too much. Uh, obviously, same swing high, FTX swing high. If it has a narrative, it should be probably performing better. You know what these wicks tell me though someone's accumulating this or someone has been well let's see if it's on lower time frames that'll actually tell us yeah so it's very illiquid people are aping aping spot longs i believe yeah this is the spot market people are aping spot longs right market ordering these uh maybe this gets a continuation maybe this gets a really nice continuation on high time frames looks like shit um, it probably it probably bottomed, right? Uh, it bottomed at least put in a significant bottom. You can buy pullbacks on this if you're bullish. Um, your high side target is going to be 42 at the very least. Um, if it's got narratives, it's going to outperform. Uh, I don't know what the narrative is on this 
Bitcoin ZRX. Um, without a narrative, I would say search for other coins. Um, but yeah, the daily 100, daily 200 is the play, the textbook play. It looks like it's playing out. If you want to buy some spot in here, buy some spot in here. Uh, you're so close to like the bottom of this chart. Um, from a trading perspective, I can't give you anything too, too actionable here. Um, it's so close to a resistance level. Unless this has a narrative, it's going to be one that I avoid. Magic, um, magic. We got a good trade on earlier, right? We did, we did magic somewhere in here. <sighs> I'm getting tired, guys. Ooh, 140 or no, one hour and 30 minutes of talking about coins. This is this is too much. Uh, this is this is too much for a weekly watch list. Too much for me. We're gonna remember that. Okay, I already have this drawn out. Thank you, thank you, God. Um, a pullback on magic. Okay, here's 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 the thing. Magic never had a bull market. It launched into the bearish market. It sold off. It had a nice monthly accumulation, right? This is your monthly accumulation high, uh, five, 57, 58 cents, right? And is blasted above it. You're gonna wanna pull back to bid into. This is gonna be, this is technically gonna be price discovery because it's never had a bull market. It's only had a bear market. Um, this may not have, well, it's got unlocking pressure, right? People who locked up their magic, uh, maybe dumping and adding, adding, adding selling pressure. But this is pretty good because you have a range here. You have a range here. You've broken out of that range. And then as it comes back, that range should be defended. Here's your demand right here on 72 cents. So if you get a nasty 50% correction, which this is no, uh, this is no um, stranger to, because look how volatile this market is. You can look to bid in this level right here, 60, 70, 50 cents. That's where I would accumulate uh, magic if you're bullish on magic. Cut if you lose 53 because there's no reason it should be doing that after putting in this much accumulation down here, trading above and breaking out. A correction into these moving averages on the daily, a correction into uh, this demand block around 70 cents, 50 cents, 60 cents, something like that is tolerable. Preferably nothing worse than one dollar if you're looking for immediate term um immediate term um upside other than that it could just chad from here it could just move straight up into here into this resistance magic's not a coin that i wanna that i wanna play with anymore um magic had a really really nice move um we caught a little bit of this move not too much um but that was covered in the clinic check out the clinic check out the magic channel in the clinic we have a thread on magic where we were trading this a couple weeks ago Okay, INJ range highs. INJ range highs. Thank you that I had this marked out. INJ range highs. Very, very nice SR flip of the mid range. Very, very nice SR flip of mid range. You put in a demand block. You've chatted all the way up to range highs. Um, let's see what the daily 100s, 200s are. If you get a pullback into the daily 200, clean bid, confluent with mid range confluent with the daily moving averages if you're so lucky as to get into a pullback into this level that is beautiful inj is currently at range highs how i would play this is you break i defend right as always you break you break out to three dollars i'll help you defend 270 my invalidation will be if you break and start closing back below this i don't want to see that um yeah, looks good. That I mean, this is a monster move. This had to have been catalyst fuel. This had to have been narrative fuel. So that's good. You want to trade coins that are outperforming. Um, do you want to buy this? I don't want to buy this because I think people are strategically stra profit taking. So break above this level. I'll help you defend it. That means there's a continuation. High side targets are going to be very high as there are. That is as this is an inefficient move down, right? Inefficient move down means there's probably going to be a quick, easy move up. Um, this is your uh, supply block, right? Obviously wicked into these levels before. Now we're finding resistance here. So yeah, clear 275 and I'll be interested. Let's set an alert here. Set an alert there. Okay. That's INJ. SXP. What are these coins you guys are suggesting? They all look the same, don't they? Like I'm, I'm just, I'm repeating the same thing. This is what these watch lists are for. But I'll give you my, I'll give you my opinion anyways. Defend gray. Defend gray, which is a high time frame breaker structure. Defend gray, defend the daily 100, you get the daily 200. Nothing more to it than that. Here's your FTX swing high. Um, FTX swing high. You can buy some of this right here at 29, 27 cents. That's a 10% correction. That's no big deal. One day you get something to 27, you buy some uh, defending this. Good spot market probably if we're looking at high time frame reversal. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it's had a bull market. It's had a bull market. 
Is that a bull market? Yeah. The, the the play that I'd put on this one is the same thing as always. The 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 daily 100, the daily 200 moving average gap fill play. Try to buy as close to the daily 100 as possible. Try to close as close to the daily 200 as possible. Look to hedge. Look to remove risk around the FTX collapse top. If it's a narrative coin, if it's something to it that has a narrative behind it, it'll probably do an, have an easier time breaking resistance. CVX, probably the same thing as CRV. Yeah. Oh no, better, better chart, much better chart. Okay, if you're looking at CRV and you want something to trade, trade this. If you're looking at CRV, it's all the same. Don't worry about fundamentals unless you're really hardcore into fundamentals. This is a really, this is a better, this is a better chart. This is a better chart and it's going to move better and it's probably going to make its way to seven or eight dollars. Um, very clean move up, a lot of consolidation at mid range, a break over mid range. It's probably going to tag this. Uh, if you want, see now this is this is where this comes in handy. Very clean trend. If you want to buy the top of this, not financial advice. If you want to buy the top of this, bid the H4 trend anytime it comes along and then take profits at the daily daily 200, right? So you could probably get a trade from, what is this, 6, 620. You can probably get another 10% move on this from 620 to 680, simply playing lower time frames on the H4 trend. Uh, try to bid the H4 trend whenever it comes along. In fact, this might be something that I look at. This might be something I look at again. Let's let's mark this out here, right? Okay, that's another coin that I like. Uh, yeah, looks a lot better than what's the other CRV, CVR, CVX, whatever they are called. <laughs> looks a lot better. I think I think yeah, I think CRV, CVX, excuse me, CVX is going to make its way to range high. I think that's going to make its way to range high. You know what it could do is it could get stopped here. It could wick. It could have a nasty, crazy one day wick and then close below the daily two hundred. Or it could just keep consolidating right here, which would be pretty bullish. This is a bunch of supply, which is going to be obvious resistance ahead, which is why I think confluent with this supply, confluent with the supply, confluent with um, this swing high right here. It's all around the same level, all around 680, right? 680. So yeah, play this one on lower time frames. It definitely looks better than the other Curve Wars coin. XRD, what is going on with XRD? A liquid coin, not too much data uh looks like it ico'd or this this chart only goes oh well, let's see if there's an xrd yes let's get another chart bitfinex okay more data here more data here more data here one day bull market constantly sold off ugly ugly coin unless this has a new narrative not something i'm interested in unless this has like an ai narrative we've completely rebanded we've changed our tokenomics we've done something phenomenal not something i'm interested in this is uh, I mean, you could you could tell the IQ of the the participant that is trading this coin because it's basically just put in whatever this is a bull pennant, a triangle, right? Triangles are back, boys. Triangles are back. <laughs> this is the market that we're in. Triangles are back. XRD, right? Put in a triangle, blast it off. I don't know how to buy this. Uh, I don't want to give you something actionable on this. If you want to, if you want to trade my system using this, same thing. Use some use some supply and demand dynamics. If there's a narrative behind this, if there's truly a narrative or something really strong behind this, it's not going to care about this supply. And it's going to keep pumping. Other than that, from my system, I'm not buying this. I'm not buying this coin. It's too illiquid. It has a horrible chart. It's already done the daily 100, daily 200 move. Um, there's nothing for me in this chart. I don't want this. I don't want this coin. Um, that's for you. That's not for me. AKT. Oh my goodness. What is going Look at these wicks, bro. Akash Network. Akash Network. Must be an Indian coin. This looks nice. This is a lot of, there's a lot of demand and accumulation. Um, there's a lot of demand and accumulation. A pullback into 27, 29, 30 would be amazing. And probably a coin that I would look into. Yeah, this looks good. This looks really good. This looks really good. It's very illiquid, which means, which tells me that it could pump hard if, if, uh, if given a catalyst. Um, it's relatively new. It hasn't sold off too heavily because it's 84 cents down to, yeah, comparatively to other coins, it hasn't been farmed that hard by the team. It, it someone, someone bid this really hard from, uh, in the merge rally. Right, so it's got some fundamental basis behind the bullishness, right? Um, coming into that same block that I showed you on, I think, AVAX. So go back and watch AVAX, right? This is your merge rally. This is your merge rally point of breakdown. This is a supply block. 
multiple rejections, we're at that same level. We're at that same level of rejection. So for me, you break, I defend. You break this level, I'll defend this level. That defines my risk. Why? You break the level, I'm able to recognize that if we deviate and start trading back below it, I'm out, right? You shouldn't do that. <clears throat> if you're going to trade into this level, you should break the level and I'll defend it and we'll continue higher. So what am I going to do? Let's put an alert here. Put an alert here on this wick. Okay, it's getting rejected by that level right now. What happened to my line? What's happened to my line right here? Okay. that go to the 15 minutes send alert create i like it i like it i like a caution network i like this coin i like the chart you break that level i'll buy it otherwise look for buying it down low daily 100 daily 200 something like that there's a there's a nice consolidation at this level right so 27 cents is where you'd buy a pullback otherwise we buy into strength her hero hero arena oh my goodness look at this coin <laughs> I guess they all look like this. I mean, what am I even laughing at? Okay. You know what's cool about this? It broke out over the daily 100. It came all the way back to the daily 100. This gives you a way to define your risk. And there's some price action in here. So let's go to lower lower time frames. Okay. Oh, it shouldn't have done this though. It should not have done that. It should if there's really buyers and some ravenous reason to buy this coin and it doesn't just want to keep getting farmed i mean shit coins don't really respond to ta that well but it shouldn't have lost this level um but it's so illiquid i mean look at these candles it's so illiquid so we'll give it a break we'll give it a break and we'll just say this is the zone that it should not lose uh on a price action basis this is the zone that it should not lose and it's not losing that zone so that's fine this is actually in the exact moment where you'd buy this coin the exact mo this is the exact moment where you buy hero network if you're bullish on hero network why you're close to the daily 100 you're close to a consolidation that led to this impulse you've retraced the entire impulse perp did this too go look at perp right perp did the exact same thing um yeah so defend defend red buy into this aim for that that's it. That's all there is to this. This is this is something someone's farming this. They're selling it. They're selling like some some amount of this every day and now they're and now they've put out something bullish to look forward to in order to pump price in order to continue farming. That's all this chart tells me. I mean, just don't get whoever suggests just don't get long-term bullish on this coin unless the, I mean, you know what you're doing. Just be careful. Just be careful. If you're looking at this from a trade, you buy at 82 or whatever that is. You buy at eight, eight cents, you sell it or whatever, you, whatever. You know what I mean? You buy in, the, in, the, in this eight, <laughs> you sell up here. You buy down here, you sell up here. Okay, that's really it for this coin. Uh, and then we have one left and that's Jones and that's gonna be over here. This this coin looks fantastic. I don't know what it does. Long accumulation, big, clean SR level. You break, I defend, right? So it broke, now we defend. It broke, now we defend. Um, it, it's really hard to get a 20% pullback all the way back to that level again. But if you can bid 250, if you can define your risk as well as possible, if you can get 250 in this area, you buy 250, you defend 250, your invalidation is it, it shouldn't close back below here. That would be a big warning sign. You can aim for higher targets. In fact, since this coin has accumulated for so long, it pro and it didn't have a bull market seemingly, right? It's only had a bear market. It probably puts in new all-time highs. This is a good coin. I think the market cap's really low, um, but it needs it needs it needs it something to be bullish about. Fully diluted market cap, 31 million current market cap, 12 million. It's a very very micro cap micro cap shit coin, but the chart looks phenomenal. If it responds, you know, if it responds to price action techniques which things seemingly do. It's still, you know, supply and demand factors into all markets. This is a place to defend. This is a place to accumulate. This is a place to buy and look for higher targets. Simple as that. It's a very, 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 very good looking chart. Very, very, very good looking chart. There's a reason it blew past this resistance. There's a reason that it didn't get rejected by this resistance again. If you lose this level, that's bearish. 
Other than that, you can buy something right here. Buy as close to 250 as possible. Get, man, these high side targets are crazy. $13, $15, maybe price discovery. Oh, Arbitum. Ar Ar Arbitrum. Arbitrum. It's an Arbitrum token. Let's see if we can do some info on this. Yield strategy and liquidity protocol for options with vaults that enable one-click access strategies while unlocking liquidity and cap. Okay, so it's a DeFi token. It's a DeFi uh, token for Arbitrum. Um, looks good. Uh, looks good. I might find a way to buy this as just like a moon bag. Put five hundred dollars. Put a thousand dollars. Some put something like this into here as like a moon bag. The upside targets are crazy. This is on log. That's why it doesn't look that that insane. But like, let's do this. And you can see how crazy the upside targets are. So you're really not missing much buying at $3, buying at $2. If you can buy at $250, that'd be phenomenal. All right, boys, an hour and 40 minutes. I'm exhausted. If you stuck with me the entire week, you're a fucking legend. You're a legend. There's no way not one of you has stuck around for an, for an hour and 40 minutes listening to me talk about these shit coins. But I do it anyways. I do it because I love the game. I do it because I love practicing. I do it because I love charts. Uh, I do it because I love you guys. Uh, hard work pays off. I always believe that. Um, yeah, man. Uh, that's going to be it for me, guys. That's going to be it for me. Tune in to next week, next week's weekly watch list. Um, drop your drop your chart requests in, in, in Discord. If you listen to this entire thing, you're a legend, bro. You are a legend. You're the best. I love you. I love you. Drop a comment below if you listen to this entire thing. I'm going to shout you out next week. All right, guys. That's it for me. Later.